Hello everyone, my name is Raul Susamuniz. I am a master student in civil and environment engineering with a focus on water resource at the Federal University of Paraíba. I am currently working on my thesis with prediction and modeling of precipitation behavior. Um, and I work with Professor Celso Augusto Guimarães. If you want to know a little bit more about me and my work, you can access my website. It is still being created, but I will leave the address in the description down below, okay? Today I'm going to show you a little bit of, about the SPI, the Standardized Precipitation Index, and some use of artificial intelligence in the hydrology field, okay? So, I hope you enjoy. First, I will show you here my, my summary. I will start uh, with the presentation. I will show you the whole idea, okay? Uh, after this, uh, I will show you the region of interest that is the whole country, okay, Brazil, the whole country of Brazil. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about the precipitation, the definition of precipitation, uh, the importance of precipitation in the hydrologic cycle. Uh, I will define some extreme weather anomalies, and then I will show to you some definitions of standardized precipitation index, and I will try to predict some standardized precipitation index through uh, some artificial intelligence libraries. Then we're going to analyze some results, and that's it. So, the whole idea here, uh, we got three parts. The first step, we're going to, you're going to get the data, get the precipitation data, all right? I will not show, I will not show this part, right? I will skip this part, but the main idea here is go to the Google Earth engine and make some JavaScript codes and then you get some precipitation data in a raster file format, okay? And that's it. So it's just the, the procedure here, the first procedure is just to get the data of precipitation. You can get this in other ways as well. I choose this way, okay? After this, we're going to the step that I will show to you guys. I will start with the second part here. So we're going to take this data in a raster format and you're going to convert it to a data frame because we're going to work in Google Collab, Collaboratory, okay, Google Collaboratory, and we're going to, to use the Python language because the Python language will, will help us to work with statistical tools and also in, in Python language you can get access with a, a lot of artificial intelligence libraries that will have to that will help us to make our prediction. Okay, so we're going to to make our scripts in Python language and work in Google Collaboratory. Uh, we're going to calculate the SPI index and we put this index as in in a format in a data series format and you're going to and you are trying to predict the SPI in a critical area as is uh, northeast of Brazil. Okay, so we got a critical area. Uh, that is probably going to to occur some draw in some times and you're going to try to predict when it's going to occur by using the SPI and by using artificial intelligence. All right, that's the idea. I hope you enjoy. I hope you can use it in your studies. And if you want to chat a little bit about this, uh, please send me an email or, or, or you can send me a message in, in Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. All right. Let's go. So I will start showing to you, uh, present to you the region of interest. Brazil is a huge country. Okay, we talk. We used to say that Brazil got this continued vibe. So when you talk the uh, Brazil, you are talk like uh, a country, but got the territorial extent of a continent. A continent. Okay. So Brazil is located in South America. It has a territorial extent of over uh, more than eight millions of quadratic kilometers, okay? Its area corresponds about 1.6% of the entire surface of the planet, all right? And almost 21% of the area of all America is Brazil. And half of South America is, is Brazil as well, because you got like 48% of South America uh, is Brazil. Thus, Brazil is the fifth largest country in, in the world, all right? So we can see here in the figure that Brazil can be subdivided in some regions. 
as northeast, that the region that I'm currently living. I'm living here in Paraíba, in João Pessoa, all right? So we can subdivide Brazil in, in northeast. And also you can notice that almost all semi-arid region, almost the, the whole semi-arid region is covered by northeast, all right? Uh, you can see that, that here is the north of Brazil, all right? You can see the south of Brazil, the southeast of Brazil, and the middle and the midwest of Brazil. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about a little bit of precipitation right now. Precipitation is very important. Okay. The precipitation is we can define precipitation as all water that returns to the surface, uh, whether in the in forms of water, in forms of snow, whatever. But we can say that precipitation is all water that returns to the surface, uh, whether in forms of water or snow, whatever. Right? Thus, precipitation is precipitation is an extremely important climatological variable, considered that it represents the input of the water in the water balance. Okay? The principal input of the water comes from the precipitation. So it's very important, thus providing the surface runoff, infiltration, and everything. Okay? So also, we, we have to notice that if it rains too much, it's a problem, okay? We got flooding problems, but uh, when it doesn't rain as well, there are problems of lack of water, okay? We got some problems of lack of water, like drought, and, and you have to pay attention to this, and you have to, and you have to know and understand, completely understand, the pattern of the rainfall in our region, all right? Uh, also, I said our region, because precipitation can be considered the variable of hydrologic cycle that represents the greatest spatial variability, not just in spatial, but also in time, so spatial and time variability. This means, okay, this means, that is, the rain is varied both in time and space. This makes the, pro the procedure of analyze the, param the parameter much more complex, much more complex. So, for example, let's try to understand the rain that is happening in Santander. I believe sometimes in Santander, and it used to rain almost every day. So, the rain that is happening in Santander, in the north of Spain, is not happening in Granada, in the south of Spain. But over time, the rain can stop in Santander and start in Granada. So, it's why I in time and also in space. All right, understand precipitation and its pattern is vital to better management of water resource. All right, it's it's vital, it's crucial. All right, uh, try to understand a little bit more about this this uh, this vary the this vary in time, in both time and in space. We can see here an example. Here the 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 state of Paraíba is where I'm currently living. We can see that in the coast, we can see uh, more rain than in the middle of the state. Okay, you got this this blue part here and the red part here. So we can see more rain here in the coast. But it, it is the the annual average of the rainfall. Okay, you can also notice that this is varying between the time through the time. In January, you get this, this behavior. But when you see June, there is a completely other behavior here. So this is uh, exactly what I was saying. This is exactly the spatial variability and the time variability that the rainfall presents. All right. So let's go talk a little bit more about the extreme climate anomalies. So, extreme climate anomalies. Uh, the extreme climate anomalies events are characterized by presenting intensity much higher or intensity much lower than the average climate risk values. So, when it's much higher than normal or it's much lower than normal, we say that we have extreme climate anomalies. So, a draw is an extreme climate anomalies. A flood is an extreme climate anomalies because it's extremely higher than the normal. Okay, uh, we can see in the literature that the natural accidents are responsible for serious damage to society in the economic field and social and natural spheres as well. 
okay these disaster are the result of adverse events natural or caused by society itself all right and in recent decades uh, the increasing of the industrial development the pollution the, the world pollution the formulation of heat island the disorderly land use and occupation among others this these negative impacts on the natural environment have been accompanied by increase of the number of the disaster, disasters. So we can see a link here. You have to pay attention to this. Okay? So we can see that we cannot prevent disaster for occurring, but we can prepare for it. And that's what this that's why I'm doing this work. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to help the government to know when a uh, uh, when a draw will occur, when an extreme climate anomaly will occur, by analyzing the SPI, that's the whole idea here. So talking about draw, draw is every recurring climate event with below normal precipitation levels. Uh, it's a draw period. Okay, so every recurring climate event with below normal precipitation levels can be characterized as a, a draw period. Drought can profoundly impact agriculture, water resource, tourism, ecosystem, and human well-being. Okay, in the socio-economic aspect, drought generates malnutrition, land degradation, losses in other economic activities, spread of disease, migration of people and animals. Okay, and you can see this research conducted by the Center of Research in Epidemiology and Disaster showed that in 2011 showed that the droughts are, are accounted for 4% of the world's total economic loss. So a huge amount of money, like 124 billion in the period of 1998 and 2017. So faced with this problem, this work we will seek to analyze indices that can help one index in next specific, it's SPI, okay? So we're gonna to analyze this index and we try to help the responsible entities in the fight against the disasters caused by such phenomena. And to, to do this, in order to do this, sorry, in order to fight against the disaster, we have to know this phenomenon. You have to characterize this phenomenon. And to do so, uh, we have to, to get some index. And that's why we use SPI. Given the complexity of the draw, there are several index developed to help monitor this phenomenon. The most important reference has been shown to be the standardized precipitation index and i emphasize here is standardized precipitation index we're going to work with a standardized precipitation this word this word is very important for this index it's standardized precipitation okay uh, we got here the possibility of analyzing different times windows the draw okay so what i'm saying is uh the the highlight of the spi is due to the possibility to analyze the different time of windows in addition to enabling comparison between results from different regions of the globe so we can now compare uh the 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 rainfall in santander the rainfall in granada with this index we can do this okay as it is a normalized index because you you're going to do a, no, a normalization all right uh, other thing, the, the, the input here is to calculate the SPI. Uh, it's, it's only required the precipitation values. I mean, to calculate the SPI, the input is only the precipitation. Okay? And in many studies, the SPI is evaluated as a primary index, as we know. Uh, and, and that's just because through SPI, we can analyze uh, the duration of the draw, the severity, the intensity, the frequency, and the input to calculate this index is just the precipitation. So it's very simple. And the idea of the SPI is very simple as well. But the statistics calculus is not so simple. Uh, I will show to you here. So let's try to understand what is the SPI. The SPI is, the, the idea is very simple. If you are working with uh, data that uh, can be a normal distribution. If you can, if you can put in a normal distribution, it's very simple. The SPI is just the rain gauge precipitation, and you can subtract the average of the rainfall in the window that you are analyzing, and then you're going to divide this to from to the standard error. 
all right you just have to do this it's very simple the spi is based on the probability of the precipitation for any time scale does it can be said that the index is a normalization of the series okay you you are doing the normalization of the series então so for the normal distribution it's very simple it's just this but we have a problem uh, and then when you when you got this value you can put here and make a uh, you're going to categorize your data you say that your data is extreme wet very wet modern wet near normal moderate draw several draw extreme draw okay it's just this you're going to categorize your data so this is the normal and if it is rain more than normal you're going to say that it's wet okay if it is less than normal you're going to say that's true right but you have a huge problem here what is the problem the problem is that the rainfall series for the most part do not follow the normal distribution therefore this requires the use of all the probability distribution in order to adequately represent the precipitation time series okay what i'm saying here is that your data that you're going to take in google earth engine uh, and you're going to start to analyze as as a precipitation data you're going to see that it's not fit in a normal distribution so what you have to do you have to change this formula here you have to calculate the spi to another distribution the whole idea i will present in the next slide okay the the whole idea of the spi is just one you're going to calculate the cumulative probability okay you have to calculate the cumulative probability uh, okay it's still aiming the standardization it is necessary to develop a cumulative problem a cumulative probability okay you have to get this distribution this cumulative probability distribution and to do to do so you have to organize all your data in a series group them into a row and then put this uh, in a manner in a ascending manner and then form like a percentile values and then you plot it when you plot it you're going to get like this you're going to get like a cumulative a cumulative probability of each rainfall right you can see the observed rainfall so your data is the the blue point all right and you're going to search for a good fit in this case we can see that a good fit is a fitted gamma you can see a fitted gamma right here okay the black line so uh you fit the time series through a suitable probability distribution in this case gamma distribution thus you can translate the precipitation values into values that vary in a relation to an average value of a distribution that is we translate the behavior of the precipitation series to other standardized scale that will be used to analyze any other series of precipitation so you are analyzed a standardized precipitation index okay let's say in short we translate the behavior of the initial precipitation series to a standardized scale right that serves to analyze any other precipitation series okay what i have to you to understand is bearing in your mind that we will not analyze how much it rained no not analyze it we analyze the corresponding cumulative probability of the phenomena on a scale which will be the spi value right so what i'm saying to you is we are not analyze this we are not analyze the rainfall we are not analyze this because in granada for example uh in, in granada if you compare for example granada and santander in santander rains let's say that in santander rains more than in granada how can you put a number how can you put a number to say if it is draw or not you you cannot do this you cannot compare the the, the two the two cities if each one got the the different distribution of the rainfall all, all of all of the year okay so what we we compare here is not the the number of the precipitation no we compare here the normal okay what is the normal here okay here we used to here never rains so the normal is gonna be one but in other city that rains every day the normal will be other so you cannot compare this, this, these two cities by the, the, the number of the, the, the quantity of rainfall. You cannot do this. You cannot do this. But you can compare uh, with a statistical tool. That's what we are doing. 
we are standard we are making a standardized precipitation index so we are going to see the cumulative probability uh, what is the probability to rain uh, 2000 millimeters we're going to see here and then we standardized and then we standardized here and then we can see the SPI for that city and like this we can compare different cities not with the number of the rainfall but with the cumulative probability and with a standard normal distribution all right this is the whole idea of, of SPI this is the idea that you have to put in your mind to understand uh, the standard precipitation index uh, all right so uh, right now we're going to analyze the, the results that we, we got here in this figure uh, we calculate here the SPI 3 6 9 and 12 and 24 between the period of the year from 1990s to 2020 using the data from ships and through the analysis of the gamma distribution for Brazil we arrived at the following results that's showing in the figure all right uh, we can see that the larger the SP number like SP SPI 1 SPI SPI 3 the larger the SPI number the larger the window size we analyze to average in our calculation so the SPI number represents the amount of window da data that we get. Thus, in 12 and 24 month window, we can analyze the damage caused of the electric rain in water bodies, for example. All right, in water bodies, in rivers. So when you analyze SPI, SPI 12 or, S or SPI 24, we analyze like when we got a uh, hydrologic drop that affects like body, uh, water bodies, rivers, and etc. All right. When in values of six or nine, we see a lack of water that impacts on agriculture. Agriculture, okay. And and in a monthly drill, we can see in SPI three, SPI one. All right. These impacts can we can see here in SPI one. All right. But here we are saying that there was a lack of water that was a lack of rainfall for for twelve months. Okay. This is start. This is start to this is start to to damage like water bodies and rivers, okay? And here, when you when you say that there was a lack of water, that that was a lack of rain in 24 months, we say that this draw could impact in a social uh, sphere. Okay, we do the same thing for the, the Northeast, okay, and last but not least, we try to catch the SPI and make a prediction through what this intelligence, okay, Profit is a library, uh, is an artificial intelligence library, and use uh, the composable time series model, and we have these three main models comp components, trend, seasonality, and holidays, and they are combined in one equation. Okay, this equation will combine this, these three methods. The library is designed to have intuitive parameters that can be adjusted without knowing details and the line model. Um, here we got uh, the profit library. It's from Python. Okay. It's, it uses the composable time series model. Okay. Uh, it boards in 1919. Um, and you got this function. That, that we can find like the trend function, okay? Uh, also, it's, it's pretty similar with a generalized active model, okay? The work here is pretty similar to the GAM. The GAM generalized active model uh, was, was created in 1987, okay? And it is, it is a class of regression model with potential nonlinear smoothness applied to the regression. So we got here with the applying this, this library, we got uh, resulting flexibility, really good predictions values, and fitting the fitting here is very fast. We can see here in the graphics that the predicted values present a good result, a really good result. So we can see that we predict two years and the results were very good. Okay, uh, but the results were very good to the SPI 3, 6, and good to the SPI 9 as well, but in the SPI 12 and the 24, you're gonna see that it's not very good. 
okay the result of here in SPI 9 and here 12 and 24 were not very good and probably thus it is a uh, this is because we got uh, less data okay in the 1940s in the 1940s uh, the neural network were created however despite the excitement in that time the innovation was not very successful because the neural network needs a lot of data they need a lot of data and this requires robust database from scientists as well a great computational capa capacity okay thus with the arrival of the data era the, that we are living right now uh, that the world is experienced today yeah, in addition to the great computational advances the artificial intelligence through the use of neural network presents itself one of the most promising tools right now okay uh, we can see we can see that the more we group the calculation of our SPI window, the more we lose the amount of data. All right? An essential attribute for the best behavior of the neural network uh, is to get a lot of data. So when you analyze the SPI 12 in SPI 24, these values, uh, to be accurate as others, uh, we need a large amount of data. So we suggest to get a large amount of data in order to obtain better values. Okay. Another alternative would be modify the network or modify the library that we currently using. Okay. Here you can see uh, my LinkedIn page, my LADS, my GitHub. Okay. You can access if you want. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now I'm going to show to you guys a little bit of my script, and I hope you enjoy. All right. Let's see. Okay. All right, just one minute. Okay, I think it is, I think it's, oh, um, all right, all right. Let's see the script. Uh, let's make a analyze here, all right. Here, we got, let's see, we got uh, the SPA calculus, okay? So, uh, first, let me show to you the library. First, let me show to you the library that you can present here. You can go to the website. Here's the library that we are using to calculate the standard precipitation. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the, the models that you can calculate. Okay. The current implementation allows the use of the L moment, L moment or maximum likelihood estimation. And here are the available distribution that you can use. I mean, uh, you can see here that this doing here this procedure, okay, to analyze which one is the best. So you can choose your fitted uh, distribution. So all the distribution that you can use are here, okay. To do this, you have just to make insta the installation. You can go here and see how to work with it. All right. Uh, Okay, what I've done here was pretty much the same thing. Uh, let me change to the Jupyter Notebook. Here, the Jupyter Notebook is on your screen. Okay, so I calculate here. I put my data. My data is just a data frame with the date or with my with my month and my precipitation. All right, two columns. So I put here as an input. Uh, I put right here the, the precipitation, okay? Uh, the frequency, I say that it's gonna be the monthly. And I scale here, I'm going to work with SPI 1, okay? If I want to work with SPI 3, I just put 3 here, all right? Uh, the fit type, I will work with L moment, but I can put here MLE and work with maximum likelihood. Sorry, uh, work with, I forgot the name. Let's see the name. Work with maximum likelihood estimation. Yes, I was right. Sorry. So the and here you can put the distribution. Okay. So I will here work with the here I will work with this distribution. That is the gamma distribution. All right. Is we you will usually use gamma. All right. Uh, here I made just a loop 
to work uh, to try to apply the SPI 3, 6, 9, 12, and 24. We got this that data frame, and then we got the data frame. Uh, it's just cleaning up here because uh, I put two columns and then I drop it. Okay, so I, here we got the clean the clean data frame with precipitation and SPI. Uh, that's it. So uh, we can plot it with a for loop, right? Pretty simple. We can plot it, and tada! Like magic, you have your SPI calculated for your region, right? And also, for the good stuff to do in like five minutes, you can also uh, predict it. How simple? Using the profit library. So first, I catch this this data frame. That is the data frame the that we were seeing in the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, after that, I just create the data frame with the data and the SPI. Okay, so we have to divide in SPI 1, SPI 3, SPI 6, 12, and 24. Alright, uh, here I slice the part of my data, catching all greater than 2019, the year 2019. Okay. To, to be the, the my test data and here's my train data okay just as lies uh, after this I train my model I call the neural profit I fit my model with the data data is just the data frame that I just showed to you and the frequency I specify that's a monthly frequency because our prediction is a monthly fraction frequency okay to predict I say that's gonna be in 24 years so we're going to predict two years. I put here the future m dot make future data frame and put my input data, my data frame, and my period. Okay, the quantity of the months that I want to predict, I put here 24. So here is 24, right? And I put forecast m dot predict future, and that's it. That's it. Pretty simple. Now we can plot it, and here we got the prediction of SPI 24. That's not so good as we already discussed. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy my presentation. I'm sorry if I were too long. I'm sorry if my English was not very good. Uh, if you have any doubts, I can answer you to email. I can answer you in the chat. Uh, just, just send an email and we can chat. If you want to collaborate with some articles, some paper, if you want to work with me, I'll be glad. Uh, I will leave my email in the description down below as well. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoy. I hope you use this. I hope you use it in your in your thesis or in your work. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye.